Wendwag is one of my favorite characters in the whole game. She has quite amazing ability points, especially strength and dexterity, comes very early, meaning she is very customizable, and is able to deal massive amounts of damage when dual wielding throwing axes. A lot of people might not realize how powerful throwing axes are when dual wielded. The main benefits over a bow is that you can get a lot more attacks, basically 3 alone from dual wielding, so while it might not seem like that at first, overall, they are very powerful weapons. Alright, so when Dwe comes at level 1, very early during the game, my favorite build for her is just pure fighter. Fighter overall, even just base fighter, is a very strong class with many bonuses. Wendwag already comes with both precise shot and point blank shot, cementing her role as a ranged attacker. As far as what skills to increase for Wendwag, the choice is up to you really, depending on what other skills your party members will cover. I like going with both perception and also stealth. So at level 2, Wendwag will already have her first fighter bonus feat. As I said before, this build is going to focus on dual throwing axes, so for our first feat, I like picking Weapon Focus Throwing Axe. Very early in the game, during the first dungeon, so the maze, you probably will not have access to more than a single throwing axe, so there's not much of a point in going with dual wielding, at least for level 2. Now, by level 3, you will already have access to the first merchant in the game, Stalton's brother, that dwarf that you can find inside the tavern during chapter 1, so this is when I like picking two weapon fighting, now as far as ability points, at level 4 we will have our first pick to increase and I like going with dexterity. Throwing axes use dexterity for attack bonus and strength for damage. Luckily, Wendwag has a very high amount of points, spent in both strength and dexterity. At level 4 we have another fighter bonus feat, in this case the choice is simple, weapon specialization, throwing axe. For our level 5 feat, I recommend you pick Deadly Aim. I don't actually rush for Rapid Shot, mostly because when dual wielding you already have quite a lot of attacks, and Rapid Shot will give us quite an annoying penalty early game, so I prefer to go with Deadly Aim at first, as this will enhance the damage of all our attacks. We also get to choose what weapon to train now, and the choice of course should be easy, Throwing Weapons. At level 6, we get another feat, in this case, improve the two weapon fighting, to increase our number of attacks. For level 7, I like going with Shake It Off. As usual, it helps to have high saving throws, and in the case of Wendwag, she has quite low will, meaning she will often fail against the most annoying crowd control effects in the game. Shake It Off will help us overcome this disadvantage. At level 8, we increase our dexterity again. For level 8, I like going with Improved Critical, Throwing Axe. This will give our Throwing Axes a 19-20 critical range. Not really high, but it's decent enough. Because of the synergy this has with the Cleaving Shot Mythic ability, it is in our best interest to increase the critical range of our Throwing Axes as soon as possible. For level 9, let us pick Greater Weapon Focus, throwing X to increase our AB. Now we also have our first weapon training ability. My favorite to pick early on is Trained Initiative. This will highly increase Wendwag's initiative score, and because she is a ranged character, it helps for her to go first before the enemy, as she can hit them from far away. Let's pick Weapon Training, throwing weapons again. For our level 10 feat pick, I like going with Improved Initiative. You might have noticed I don't really bother with clustered shots so early, mostly because it is very easy to pierce demon's physical resistance by just using the Covenant of the Inheritor, or basically just having a Divine Spellcaster cast the Align Weapon spell on Wendwag. So let us go with Improved Initiative. Your level 11 feat choice should be pretty easy, greater to weapon fighting. This means we will have at this point plus 3 extra attacks just from dual wielding. Another dexterity increase at level 12. And now, greater weapon specialization, throwing axe. Alright, by level 13 we have already picked the most important feats for Wendwag. 
both when it comes to fighter specific feats and also some general ones. The choices up to now are more personal and up to you really. You can, for example, get Dwendwag started on the snapshot line of feats, thus allowing her to make attacks of opportunity with throwing weapons. Personally, I'm not really a fan of this line of combat feats, mostly because of how feat intensive they are. You are going to need combat reflexes, then snapshot, and then you have improved snapshot, greater snapshot, seize the moment, it's quite a lot of feats really, and for a party that has many melee characters, the attacks of opportunity they will generate, especially when considering pets, is more than enough. I prefer to have Wendwag simply snipe the enemy. So for this level I'm going with double slice to increase our damage with our offhand throwing axe. Now for another weapon training ability, I like going with armed bravery, this will increase Wendwag's will saving throws. Around level 14 is when I actually pick Rapid Shot. By this point we will have enough AB to actually take Rapid Shot hit and still be able to attack just fine. Around level 15 is when I actually start getting into the snapshot line of feats, mostly because frankly by now there really isn't anything special for us to pick, but like I said before, this can change depending on your tastes. You can for example pick improved precise shot, I don't really bother with this feat, Mostly because true seeing can already let you bypass most of the concealment effects enemies have. Total concealment is actually a bit of a misnomer, mostly because it means concealment from 50% to higher. So basically, if the enemy has 50% concealment, this feat is not going to help us at all. You can also go with the Vital Strike line if you fancy it. Personally, I don't see much of a use to the Vital Strike line, when it comes to characters that are dual wielding, because they have quite a lot of attacks, and Vital Strike limits you to just a single attack per round. So like I said before, starting from now, I'll pick the Snapshot Fit line, beginning with Combat Reflexes. Level 16 means another point in Dexterity. At level 16, I also like to pick the Seize the Moment Fit. Alright, now at level 17, I'm going with Snapshot. As for our Weapon Training ability, I like going with Fighter's Reflexes to increase Wendwag's Reflex. Now at level 19 we'll get Greater Snapshot, thus finishing the whole Snapshot line, meaning Wendwag will be able to get quite a lot of attacks of opportunity, even when dual wielding throwing axes at range. At last we are at level 20, we'll get to increase our last ability point in Dexterity, and last but not least, we will also get our highly powerful Fighter Capstone ability, Weapon Mastery. This ability is quite amazing, it's going to increase our Throwing Axe Critical Multiplier by a plus one, and also automatically confirm all our critical threats. Basically, with Weapon Mastery Improved Critical and Mythic Improved Critical, Wendwax Throwing Axes will have a minimum of times 5 Critical Multiplier. We also get our last feat, and in this case it can be anything you choose really. I'll go with close red shots. Alright, now let's talk about Wendwag's mythic progression. I suggest you start with the cleaving shot mythic ability. With this ability, your ranged attacks will actually hit nearby enemies, so long as you either kill them or hit them with a critical hit. This will often mean a lot of extra attacks, so it is very useful. Now for our first mythic feat at mythic rank 2, I prefer going with two weapon fighting mythic. If you are playing on hard and unfair, it helps to increase our AB by as much as we can, especially during the early and mid game. This is why I like picking this ability early on, instead of focusing on other abilities that increase damage. For our level 3 mythic ability, go with distracting shots. This is a very neat ability that will apply a armor class penalty debuff against melee attacks to all enemies when Wag hits with her axes, thus helping the rest of our party who will be mostly equipped with melee weapons. Also works for unarmed strikes, such as for example monks or pet attacks, so it is very powerful. For our second mythic feat at mythic rank 4, I like going with weapon focus mythic to once again increase our AB. Now for our rank 5 mythic ability, I would pick ranging shots, this helps you hit against enemies that have higher armor class, by ensuring that whenever Wendwag misses, she will gain a stacking bonus to her AB until she actually manages to hit the enemy. 
Now that we are at Mythic rank 6, this is when I like to pick Mythic Weapon Specialization. At Mythic level 7, I like going with the bigger they are Mythic ability. Increasing our AB against enemies that have a size penalty to their armor class. Quite a lot of enemies you meet in Wrath of the Right will be demons of either large or huge size, both of which will take a penalty from this mythic ability. Now at mythic level 8 I like going with deadly aim mythic. Alright, so at mythic level 9 we get for our intents and purposes our last mythic ability. In this case I'll be going with ever ready to enhance our attacks of opportunity. Now you might have noticed that I did not choose the improved critical mythic ability in this build. You can, of course, replace one of these feats or abilities for the mythic critical. The problem with throwing axe is that just like bows, they have low critical range. With improved critical, you'll be looking at 1920 instead of just 20. If your Wendwag is in a party with a trickster main character, then I highly suggest you pick mythic weapon critical as soon as possible, mostly because with the aid of a trickster, she will be able to get her throwing access to 1520 critical, a lot higher than just 1920. Now, when it comes to normal hits, this Wendwag will be able to do around 55 to 70 damage, a little higher at times. Meanwhile, for critical hits, she will do around 3 times that same damage. So, let's say 150 to 170 damage. But in this case, do remember that we are missing the improved critical of mythic feat so she could easily hit for more than 200 damage on a critical hit if you so desire. Now, a trickster power at Wendwag will actually have up to times 5 critical multiplier for her throwing access and 15 to 20 critical range, quite an upgrade. The build is mostly the same really, the main differences are that you will want to get the trickster specific improved critical feats, here the first, the second and then the last. During combat, you will also certainly end up hitting for quite a lot more damage when you achieve a critical hit. For example, 305 damage here. So basically, only Wendwag attacked here and we were able to quickly defeat these enemies on unfair late game enemies I might add, but of course she was aided not only by the trickster specific feats, but also the ultimate trickster spell called Trick Fate. Alright, now let us talk about gear choice for Wendwag. As far as weapons, I like going with Fixed Obsession and also Frost Embraced on the offhand. Both of these weapons can be easily found during Chapter 3 in Winter Sun after defeating the boss of the area. Fixed Obsession alone will keep increasing your damage, stacking up to a massive plus 10. For her armor, I like going with the Web Strider padded armor, that will increase her dexterity by a plus 2 morale, a very unique type of buff. It doesn't really offer much armor class, but Wendwag as a ranged character won't really be getting hit that much by the enemy. One of the most important items for this build is the Gloves of Dueling, because it will increase your fighter training bonuses by a plus 2. I believe you can first get these gloves at chapter 3, but there are minor versions of these gloves that only increase the weapon training bonuses by a plus 1 during chapter 2 from Wilser Garms, the merchant who will be in your campsite. The rest of the gear is up to you really, I like going with Cloaks of Resistance, of course, because Wendwag doesn't tend to have high saving throws. Now, the mask you get at the end of Nanyo's first quest as well, because of how absurd the saving throw bonuses are, really. The Merciless Shot Ring, because it's going to increase her attack bonuses with throwing axes, and also a ring that increases initiative. Wendwag, in particular, because of her high dexterity, will tend to have very high initiative, so she will be able to snipe the enemy as soon as battle starts. Well, so this was basically it. I hope you've enjoyed this video on how to build your Wendwag. Once again, do remember that there are certain things you can change about this build to better suit your tastes, especially when it comes to certain mythic abilities and feats. Thank you for watching and please remember to like this video and subscribe to help the channel grow. See you next time, friends.